You know, I really can't think of the last time we had a female lead in a Star Wars project. I mean, except for the sequel trilogy and Rogue One and Season 3 Mandalorian and, oh, the upcoming Ahsoka series. Uh, uh, anyway, welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and we're going to get into an article talking about why uh, the upcoming announcement of Star Wars Outlaws proves why we need more female Star Wars characters. Let's get into it, shall we? Star Wars Outlaws Backlash proves we need more women protagonists. A woman of color is the lead in Ubisoft's upcoming open world Star Wars game. Well, first of all, this is a woman of color. They screwed up. This looks like Sigourney Weaver from Alien. I mean, how is this a woman of color? She's white. This is white. If you want this to be a woman of color, you must be really embarrassed by the fact that it's a woman of color, and you made her the lightest skin woman of color I have ever seen with my own optics. Like, first of all, the backlash, if you want to call it that, is not proof we need more female protagonists. The point is we've had way too many. No one's against strong female characters in Star Wars. No one has ever been. However, we are against a very obvious narrative that that is all you care about and you're very much pushing this. If it were any company that wasn't Disney, they probably would have seen the writing on the wall a while ago and given us characters, you know, a diverse lead character that was, I don't know, male every once in a while. Aside from Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which is a sequel, mind you, what Star Wars game that has come out has had a, a male character in the last longest time? Even in Battlefront 2, Aiden Verso is the main character, a new strong female of color. That said, maybe there was some backlash around her. I certainly don't remember any. I remember backlash around that game because it kind of sucked, but I don't remember, you know, backlash around that character. So it's not like even adding a strong woman of color is even new to Star Wars, but at least they had the decency to make Aiden Verso clearly a woman of color. And again, this is a white bitch. Ubisoft's open world Star Wars game is one of the most hyped titles to come out of Summer Games Fest 2023. Is it though? Is it really? I mean, there were some pretty hype games, or at least a couple, to come out of Summer Game Fest 2023. The new Sonic the Hedgehog, the new John Carpenter game. I don't really see anyone talking about this except to laugh and make fun of the fact that there's this apparent backlash. Most of the people I've seen talking about the backlash are making fun of the fact that you're making up that there's a backlash. There hasn't been any real backlash. We're just tired of dumb Star Wars content, and we've been tired of dumb Star Wars content since... I don't know, 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. With its GTA-S gameplay, intriguing players, its sexy droid turning them on. Alright, that is something I have heard about this game. They apparently made a droid hot. And its own woman protagonist making Chuds very, very angry. After Star Wars Outlaws was revealed during Ubisoft Showcase, some Gamergate-adjacent gamers took issue with the protagonist. R really, you're still running with the Gamergate narrative. Do you know how many years it's been? The vast majority of the people reading this at this point probably don't even know what Gamergate was. We've grown out of that. I mean, Gamergate wasn't even real to begin with, but I'm not going to get into that. This is not going to be dissecting the past. But the vast majority of your 13-year-old audience, Kotaku, don't even know what Gamergate was. They were like in diapers when that happened. <laughs> A woman of color, again, barely, named Kay Vess, oh, that's such a stupid name, portrayed by venezuelan board actor, oh, don't you mean actress, Humberly Gonzalez, oh my god, she did not win the lottery in the cool Latino name, or sorry, Latina name department, some begged Ubisoft to let them switch to a male character as they've waited years for an open world Star Wars game and couldn't bear the thought of navigating through it as a woman, really. Show us some tweets. Give me, give me some proof that, again, I can verify with my eyeballs here. I want to see people having these sort of thought processes and putting them down on the Twitter. Or are you just making this up? Because, yeah, people have been clamoring for an open world Star Wars game. But I think the main thing they've been clamoring for is one that's good, not one that's Disney. Others lamented the lack of lightsabers and men and said no thanks to the concept of anything else. I didn't see this trailer. I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys. I've been checked the hell out of Disney Star Wars. When I want Star Wars, I'll watch the originals, you know, the good OGs. And you know what? If I'm going to play a Star Wars game, if I really want to play a classic mwah, Star Wars game, well, I'm going to go with the Lego games, like the old Lego games on the Nintendo GameCube or, you know, Jedi Academy, something like that, from when Star Wars still had balls. Oh, and of course, Shadows of the Empire. You can't forget Shadows of the Empire. Point is, people want Star Wars that's actually... I don't know, reminiscent of Star Wars. Meanwhile, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is right there, brand new and playable, and featuring a male protagonist. Yes, yes it is. Also, released Broken is a crap game. It was unplayable on PCs and barely playable on consoles after years upon years of waiting, and it's a sequel to a game that had a male main character. But when was the last original product that you put out that had a male main character? And don't say The Mandalorian, because again, that show got usurped by female characters as well, some of which were cool, others, well, not so much. Yeah, what about the Obi-Wan Kenobi show? Oh, that's right, that ended up being hijacked by females. Okay, well, what about the Book of Boba Fett? Damn it! 
also hijacked by females. Well, I'm sure the upcoming Ahsoka... Wait, right, it, it's an Ahsoka show. So tell me again why people might be clamoring for some, you know, male characters. Because he's given us one Star Wars property with a male character, and it's a sequel, and the game was broken out the gate, so people really didn't even get to play it. But Kay Vest represents a much larger issue with the gaming and Star Wars universe, and her role is a crucial one. Really, here's Iden Verso. I brought her up earlier. She's not an altogether awful character. I mean, she's by no means going to hit anyone's top 50 favorite Star Wars characters of all time, unless you're an absolute zoomer. But there's, you know, objectively, she's definitely not the worst thing to ever come out of Star Wars. But again, she at least definitely looks dark when you compare her to uh, this chica right here, so... Star Wars Video Games and Women Star Wars Outlaws falls into one of the more unfortunate center rings on the Venn diagram of bad actors. Gamers and Star Wars fans. Oh, that's right. G go ahead and attack, you know, gamers. Gaming being the single largest entertainment medium in the world. A multi-billion dollar industry that you literally put out an article just a few days ago about how women actually are 50% of console owners. So now you're saying that, you know, 50% of these gamers are also bad actors. You're contradicting yourself mere days after putting out that article and again Star Wars fans again Star Wars is one of the largest IPs in the world and you're gonna say that oh the Venn diagram bad you know Star Wars fans you are attacking so many individuals right now how do you think this is gonna win anybody over I want to know your money-making strategy please Kotaku I, I want to know just, just send me a letter that shows me your money-making strategy cuz your boy here ain't a businessman I don't really know a whole lot about how to make money but I will take a look at that business strategy and do whatever the opposite of it says and I guarantee you I will become a rich bitch this is a franchise still reeling from the Mary Sue allegations and general hatred thrown at Rey, the lead in the sequel trilogy, and as mentioned, the vestiges of the Gamergate hate campaign linger throughout gamer culture. As such, the backlash should be expected, even if it's exhausting. Aside from Battlefront 2, which features Aiden Verso as the main protagonist, though there are missions where you play as Luke Skywalker or Han Solo, yeah, there's, there's missions where you play as other characters, but... Aiden's still the main character. Like, that's neither here nor there. Who you play as is different than who is the main character. Jedi Knight Mysteries of the Sith, an expansion for Dark Forces 2 that features Mara Jade as its star, and Star Wars Jedi Starfighter, which has Adi Gallia as the lead, though it takes place almost entirely in the cockpit of a ship. There are no other Star Wars games that lock you in as a female character, but there are multiple Star Wars games where you can choose or you can play as multiple different characters. I mean, the idea that we need more Star Wars games with female, uh, female protagonists, no we don't. We need more Star Wars games that fans who want to pay money can just get excited for without gender ideology one way or the other. But there are plenty of them that make you play as a male character, from the wildly popular Star Wars Jedi games to Force Unleashed series, all the movie tie-ins and in between, or they let you choose between male and female characters, whether it's the Lego games or a handful of Star Wars Episode 1 spin-offs or Knights of the Old Republic and other MMOs. As you can imagine, the choice often keeps misogynists quiet. No, no, no. Why don't you have a choice? is not misogynistic. Like, they added the choice to choose between male or female in Pokemon from, like, Gen 2 and onward. W were there, like, a bunch of gatekeeping misogynists keeping women away from Pokemon? Or did the developers just realize, hey, men and women play games, and this is a character that's supposed to be a reflection of you. Maybe we should just give them a choice. Like, it's, it's not to keep misogynists quiet. Like, if I was forced to play as a female in a Pokemon game, I mean, I would still just judge it on the merit of it being a game because Pokemon leaves ideology out of its stories. Star Wars doesn't do that. People are terrified of playing as a female character because there's no way to play as a female character without being preached to because we've seen this done time and time again in Star Wars the last decade or decade and a half at this point. It got nothing to do with women and has everything to do with Disney and ideology. But Kay Vess is the female version of many Star Wars characters. A rogue, a rebel, a scoundrel, and a rapscallion. She could easily step into Han Solo or Cassian Andor's boots. She's got an adorable companion creature, just like Jedi survivor's Cal Kestis, and she's got the smirky sass that makes so many other Star Wars scumbags so lovable. On paper, she's the perfect lead for an open world game about outlaws. It's just the fact that she's a she that's the problem. I mean, did you just assume her gender? How do we know that she's a she? Look, it's not that she's a she. I'm gonna read Reiterate. It's the fact that very obviously this is going to be used as a propaganda and agenda tool from Disney. It's got nothing to do with the fact that you're playing as a woman because people have loved playing as women in video games since the dawn of video games. Jill Valentine, Lara Croft, uh, Samus Aran, uh, Zelda. I mean, I, I can keep going. Women have been as characters in video games since, you know, the inception of video games. 
However, Star Wars has not always been an ideological mess of a franchise that only caters to one side of the political aisle. And that, my friends, is why people are upset. Because they know what's coming with this. They know that the moment people say, well, I'm not super interested in this game because I don't like Disney Star Wars. <gasps> Misogynist! Like, he said, I didn't like Mandalorian Season 2 all that much. Mando was still the main character. It's not about male or female characters. It's about good or bad writing and good or bad products. Disney hasn't given us anything good since... Probably since Rogue One, which, by the way, starred a main female protagonist. Women in games at Ubisoft and beyond. Though it's uninspiring that a woman-led game would receive backlash even now, this particular backlash is largely due to the lack of female protagonists across modern gaming. There are all kinds of modern females in gaming. Wh what are you talking about? You literally are showing one right here. One of the, the single most famous ones. What about Tracer? What about, again, they recently remade and, or rebooted the Tomb Raider games with Lara Croft. Resident Evil's been getting all these reboots, those strong female characters that have been in every game. I mean, look, I'm not the biggest gamer in the world. Believe it or not, I actually focus more on things like anime and movies, but your boy loves some video games, and there are countless Countless games out there starring women. Alien Isolation. You're literally playing as Sigourney Weaver, uh, Ripley's daughter. There's so many games where you play as women. It is not a big deal. When you say that uh, there's a lack of female protagonists across modern gaming, are you out your damn mind? Think of every game that's won Game of the Year at Jeff Keighley's Game Awards. Only two of them feature women protagonists, and they both share the bill with men. The Last of Us Part 2 and It Takes Two. Well, first of all, The Last of Us Part 2 does not share with men. Uh, the Last of Us Part 2, all about the pussy. Uh, lesbian pussy, but the pussy nonetheless. Like, that is a female-centric game. And you know what? So what if games starring men win Game of the Year? Game of the Year should just be about what is the best game. I'm really sorry if companies out there are focusing too much on gender ideology to make good games. Oh, we made a game that stars a woman. Yippee. Is the game good? Uh, oh, no? So this other game won Game of the Year? Well, sucks to suck. Maybe focus on making a good game instead of touting about how inclusive you are. You might win Game of the Year. Because I'm telling you, it ain't got dick to do with what's between your legs. Pun semi-intended? The others had either male protagonists, like God of War, Sekiro, The Witcher 3, and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, or they had characters you could completely customize, like Elden Ring and Dragon Age Inquisition. Hulk isn't, like, customiz customization the ultimate form of diversity? You can make male, female, black, white, Asian, probably they, thems, and other made-up crap. Like, you would think you would want more games like Elden Ring and Dragon Age Inquisition because of all the diversity they offer, but you're somehow even throwing them under the bus because whammon, whammon, whammon. Aside from the Horizon series, which got backlash for giving protagonist Aloy realistic peach fuzz, no, 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 got backlash because there's been a very obvious attempt, not just in video games, but modern media in general, to turn main female characters into just the fugliest of beasts. That's what it's getting upset about. Like, like her face blew up like my grandfather's belly after a Thanksgiving dinner. It has nothing to do with the peach fuzz. It has to do with, I mean, her peachy face and all the red swollenness that's going on because they want a fat, fugly character because that's what they think women relate to. Let me tell you, again, I got a lot of hot female friends that are gamers and, uh, uh, they also like sexy characters because men don't know everyone has a thin layer of hair covering their entire bodies yet yeah, yes people do but thanks for trying to make men dumb everyone fucking knows that you'd be hard-pressed to find a triple-a game led entirely singularly by a woman the Lara Croft series sure you could no, the Tomb Raider series it's not the Lara Croft series it is the Tomb Raider series you don't just get to call it the Lara Croft series because she's the main character. You don't call Resident Evil the Crest Redfield series or the Leon Kennedy series. To use the current example of Star Wars, since this is a Star Wars article, you don't call this the Cal Kestis series. No, it's the Star Wars Jedi, you know, maybe it's just Jedi series, however you would call it. Point is, that's such a, you're literally here putting you know, the Lara Croft series because you want to give more agency to the character of Lara Croft. Uh... But even she had to go through a character rework to differentiate herself from her polygon-titted 90s counterpart. And it's a worse version of the character. Let's be real. It took out all the edge that was in her character. But yeah, keep telling yourself it's a better version. And Metroid Prime Remastered Samus is almost always in a full suit of armor. So it's easy to forget that her franchise is led by a woman. 
I thought you wanted to erase the differences between men and women. That's why you're so happy with, you know, all these diverse characters and the they, thems and the rainbow months. I mean, you don't like the differences. Now you're saying, oh, we need to accentuate the differences. Women can be just as badass as men. Women can wear power armor like Samus does. You're defeating your own points that you've made in previous articles. You literally are just looking for something to bitch about, you dumb morons. Ubisoft has, historically, had its own problem with censoring women protagonists, as well as a sordid trail of sexual misconduct claims directed at its executives, as po oh yeah, as Polygon reported back in 2014, because Polygon is the paragon of, you know, undisputable journalistic integrity. Uh, look, I'm sure there was probably some sexual assaults or whatever at Ubisoft. They happen in every job. Is it okay? No, but I'm not going to take what Polygon says seriously, because they're going to call something so much as a dude looking sideways at a woman's ass in the office sexual assault. Sorry, honey. Honey, that's not an assault. The company abandoned female protagonists in Assassin's Creed Unity, essentially saying they weren't worth the additional work. It's double the animations, it's double the voices, all that stuff, and double the visual assets. Yeah, all that stuff costs money and resources. It's not about it being too much work. I mean, there, yeah, there's additional work as well, and work is time, and time is money, time is valuable. There's so much more than you just laying it down as, oh, it's too much work to add titties. Like, that's not what they're saying. Use your brain for all of two and a half milliseconds if you would be so kind. Then executive director Alex Amencio told Polygon, especially because we have customizable assassins, it was really a lot of extra production work, which again is time and money. And as Bloomberg's Jason Schreier detailed back in July 2020, Ubisoft's reported issues with how it treated women employees bled into its inability to censor female protagonists. I, I have trouble believing that. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, Origins, and Odyssey were all meant to heavily feature women leads, but as their production advanced, their roles shrank. With Odyssey, Strider reports that the team originally proposed making the sister the only playable character, according to four people who worked on the game, until, until they were told that wasn't an option. So while it's unclear if the reported internal issues at Ubisoft have been resolved, the centering of a woman character in a Star Wars game is a breath of fresh air, both for games within the sci-fi fantasy franchise and games made by the studio. K-Vest represents something so much bigger than just a new character in an open world Star Wars game? No, she doesn't, because this game is not going to be remembered in, I don't know, let's say two and a half years, because it's Disney Star Wars. It will not have its own legacy, so it doesn't represent anything bigger at all. If anything, it represents just another nail in the Disney Star Wars coffin. I'm not even going to read the rest of this. Look guys, either Kotaku doesn't want to admit that we are entirely correct and what we're bitching about is valid and that, hey, we just want good products, stop making some sort of gender war out of everything, or they really are that stupid. And frankly, I really do hope they're that stupid because well, I already don't have a lot of hope for the human race as it is, but if this is how journalism is going, if this is what true journalistic integrity is, oh my god, let the asteroid come. It is going to be glorious. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments below, or let me know on Twitter where you can find me at both the word and Please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I do nerdy news every day. Not always about Star Wars or video games, but anime, movies, Magic the Gathering, you name it. It's all here in the Nerdosphere. And this has been Words of Paradise.